turn this into something positive and maybe it'll spread. He's the most positive person on his job. Now you're cute. I feel good. And welcome to Positively Milwaukee. We hope you and your family are enjoying the Sunday morning. We begin with a story that helps young people find their value and their purpose. That's what a local group is doing. It's a community treasure that helps girls soar. Pearls, strong, enduring, valuable. I feel brave and happy. Pearls for Teen Girls, a free program helping young ladies feel like gems. We call it a safe space because we are able to express ourselves and then hearing, I've been through that as well, we're in this together. It's, it's really beautiful. The organization stresses healthy relationships, self-esteem, self-development, and smart goal setting. Executive Director Jerry Howes. Pearls is a nonprofit organization that provides self-development and leadership development to girls in fifth through 12th grade. Takiya Bennett joined Pearls while a student in high school. At 28, she's now a Pearls facilitator. It's been rewarding to help these girls find out who they are and where they want to be in life as far as their secondary education um, or just who they are internally. It's, it's really been a joy. Pearls helps young ladies find their potential. Howes shares statistics over the last 10 years. 99% of Pearls girls chose not to get pregnant. 96% graduated high school and 96% went on to college. When I see them flourish I don't think that there's anything as rewarding for me. Howes is proud of Pearl alums like Tashe Price, now serving in the U.S. Army. One thing I could say about Pearls is that they show you that they care about you in every aspect of your life. It could be financially, mentally, um, emotionally, anything that you need, Pearls is there. With the pandemic, leaders are counseling girls through technology. How rewarding is that for you? I love it. It does bring me joy, especially during this time now, um, because we're still seeing the girls virtually. Um, they definitely keep me sane. They still have their, their joyous smile, their joyous personality. They bring that energy to group and I feed off of it. And it's really been a, truly a blessing for me. House fears the consequences for teens they cannot reach because schools are closed. My concern continues to grow for girls or youth as period who their safe spaces were at school or at a community organization and now they don't have that. With spikes in domestic violence happening, I worry about the children and how can we access more of them as people continue to be laid off and unemployed and it's going to get hot. All of those are combinations that could be really deadly. And that's why the organization tries to reach out to as many girls as possible and help them find their purpose the way Jerry Howes did. You know, Kara, I have to tell you, um, many, many, many years ago, when life was very, very different for me, I would pray, like, what is my purpose? Why am I here? And the answer that I got back was, you're here to love. And I thought, well, Okay, but how is that going to pay my bills? Ta-da! <laughs> Always tell them, you know, what are you passionate about? And if there are too many things for you to decide from, what pisses you off most? Start there. And that's your passion. There you go. It's <laughs> your passion for me. Worked for me. Pearls from Teen Girls, teaching young ladies they too are nature's pearls even more precious than the ones from the sea. It's got to feel intrinsically good to your soul knowing that you are actually helping these young kids soar. Yes, and it's ironic to me because it's a pay it forward opportunity for me because I was one of those girls. I am so grateful to be right where I am and working with the incredible women that I'm working with on behalf of these amazing, resilient young ladies. I don't know where I would have been that my that sisterhood, that community, without them, I don't I don't think I would be where I am today. Thank you for allowing me to become a Pearls Girl 
And what's the pearls, girl? Always the pearls, girl. Bye. Mwah. That says it all. Now, we have a link to Pearls for Teen Girls on our Positively Milwaukee Facebook page. Check it out. Another place for kids to shine is on the soccer pitch. They can have fun and stay active. Our Lance Allen finds that the Milwaukee Torrent Camp makes safety a priority. We're going to have a great day off camp. It's soccer in a different style. This is normally we're supposed to have our camp with uh, the coaches from Bayer Leverkusen in Germany, from a professional soccer club. Um, because of the situation, they were unfortunately were not allowed to come. And we made the decision instead of cancelling the camp, uh, we are following uh, the guidelines from the Wisconsin New Soccer Association. This Milwaukee Torrent Camp at Ewald Soccer Fields in Oconomowoc. We have 99 kids in the camp and a waiting list of almost 30 kids. Um, you have to do it right, otherwise people don't trust you. Uh, reputation is one of the most important things you have. But it's also, again, it's, it's the fun. You know me, this is what I'm living for. And it's just the right thing to do. You can tell the kids are having fun, but the mission is to keep them safe as well. Social distancing in effect and nine or fewer per group. So it's nine kids and one coach. Um, and we're not allowed to, to change to change the kids during the camp. They stay in that group. As you can see over here, um, even where they drop off their bags and their water bottles, there's social distancing. You can see this in the background with all the cones. And the kids, they're just happy to get out of the house with friends. Since I haven't been like practicing for a while, it just feels great to be out here because like it, this is just a good camp. I don't even care if we're not playing. Like even being able to like play outside and have different people to play with. I mean like even playing with somebody is nicer. Uh, that's good to see and kids really need that. Thank you very much, Lance. Well, a Wauwatosa woman loves making crafts, so when she learned about Alzheimer's activity mats, she took action for a positive purpose. 89-year-old Jen Gakowski and her friend Jennifer are touching, feeling, zippering and buttoning activity mats for Alzheimer's patients. And then a lot of them have pockets. Jen got the idea to make the mats while perusing the internet at her home at St. Camillus Independent Living Center in Wauwatosa. I had never heard of them and they were so interesting so I kept looking. Jen likes doing crafts. A friend of hers had given her a placemat, hoping she could turn it into something. Then it clicked. Jen could make an activity mat for people with Alzheimer's and dementia. Then my second thought was, well, why would I send it away when we've got our own memory care unit right in my own backyard? The St. Camillus campus has a memory care unit steps away from the independent living center, so patients there can use the mats lovingly sewn by Jen and her friends. We use the mats as part of our sensory stimulation program. Bridget McNair is the Research and Life Enrichment Director at St. Camillus. Sometimes it's hard to communicate with someone who can't verbalize their thoughts or emotions. It works well with those individuals who might, like I said, need an opportunity to use their hands or uh, be able to connect with something that they don't have to really think through a thought process and it helps them engage with others and their loved one. Each mat is hand stitched with different kinds of activities. It just depends on what scraps Jen and her friends have on hand. You just have to scout around because there's a, a bunch of variety of of things. It takes a while to do them but, and you have to be sure you sew them on very well so that they don't come off. And it helps that each one is different. Some are Christmas themed and some are a little bit more bedazzled, so a little flashy. Uh, it might capture somebody's attention, so we use their past life history and their known interests and try to match them up with the right the right quilts. A thoughtful handmade gift for a stranger who might not be able to put their own thoughts into words. We are so thankful for, for their thoughtfulness and for them reaching out to us and taking the time to use their talents and create something that we could really benefit from. I'm humbled that there is a, a help to, to the patients. That's really the bottom line. And they are beautiful. St. Camillus is happy to accept more mats. Now, if you are interested, Jen suggests doing what she did. Look them up online and find out how to make the mats. The mats, that is. Well, we have more positive stories ahead, including a visit with a Milwaukee icon. A Negro Leagues Hall of Famer talks about protests, COVID-19, and keeping kids out of trouble.
Summerfest is giving us a reason to smile this morning despite being canceled. The big gig still had some big swag. Staff handed out free koozies at the Summerfest box office. They're red with the year 2020 on them. Now, they were all printed before this year's festival had to be canceled, so the people were the winners when Summerfest leaders handed them out for free. And now you can buy them on the Summerfest merchandise website if you'd like one. Could become a collector's item. Milwaukee police officers helped clean up the community as part of last week's Juneteenth celebration. Even Chief Alfonso Morales picked up trash in neighborhoods. This was in partnership with COA Youth and Family Centers. So thank you to, for making the city look so good. The intersection of MLK and Locust has a message. People painted a huge Black Lives Matter mural. This project was done by the Dale Hill and other local artists. The city commissioned the mural and funded it through donations. Quite an impressive piece. And another reason to smile, Major League Baseball coming back. Teams will play 60 games. Now that's 102 games short of the regular season, but it still means that baseball will be returning in the spring. And spring training starts Wednesday in each team's home city. Opening day is scheduled for July 23rd or 24th. No fans, though, of course, will be in the stands, but still it's returning. A man well known in Milwaukee's Little League community is now 91 years old. He has a lot of wisdom to share about today's world. Here's Ryan Jenkins. This is probably where you'd find 91 year old James Beckham if it wasn't for the coronavirus pandemic here at this park named after him back in 2013. For nearly six decades, he said this is a place where he's seen the power neighborly love can have in overcoming difficult times here in Milwaukee. In this era of uncertainty, we went to talk to James Beckham about everything from civil unrest in our community to the coronavirus and the MLB postponing its season. <laughs> it's the first time I've ever seen that. I've never seen that uh, the major league shut down, you know. Beckham is a former U.S. Marine turned Negro League Baseball Hall of Famer. He lived through times of segregation and civil unrest, and at age 91, he's nearly seen it all. I think they have a right to protest the guy on the, have his knee on somebody's neck, you know, you, that's his whole work. That should not happen. Mr. Beckham is proud to see the protesters marching in the streets peacefully, but he's against any violence and looting. I don't think the people who set up the protests and are doing any rooting and violence, I don't think they can't up anything. That's that's somebody else doing that. In addition to civil unrest, we also asked Mr. Beckham about the coronavirus, which has impacted his life's mission. Every time we turn around, this virus is, is coming. In 1964, after serving in the U.S. military during the Korean War and playing for the East St. Louis Giants, Mr. Beckham moved here to Milwaukee, where he started the Beckham Stapleton Little League with the goal of keeping Milwaukee's kids off the streets. A lot of kids have uh, come through the ball and they have been successful themselves. More than 25,000 kids have gone through his program, some growing up to become doctors, lawyers, and teachers. When we first started Little League back in the 60s, it was hardship for us because we didn't have the kind of money and the kids didn't have the money. Today, his Little League teams are facing a new challenge. The coronavirus is keeping his players off these fields. Games have been canceled and his players are missing out on important mentorships and exercise. This has created a lot of problems. And quite natural, we've got to try to overcome it. And I think we can. While still holding on to hope that the Little League will make some kind of comeback this year, Mr. Beckham is also hopeful about the future of Milwaukee. Saying in tough times, like when he lost his son to gun violence in 1993, or when his wife of nearly six decades passed away in 2015, it's always been members of the community who step up to volunteer when they're needed. We are here to love one another, teach each other, and try to help one another. Words we all need to hear. Mr. Beckham holding on to the same values that he has shared through baseball all these years and looking great for 91. Coming up next, students asked their school for more diversity and the school answered. Plus hook, line and sinker, we hit the open waters as some kids learn to fish.
Welcome back. Now to Franklin, young people fighting for change. As Katie Crowther shows us, they want more diversity, and they made an appeal to the school board. There is a growing movement in Franklin, led by current Franklin High School students and recent graduates. As a current student now, there's been many times where I felt like an outsider at the school just because of the color of my skin. Julia Danes, who is Puerto Rican, is going to be a junior at Franklin High School, which has a student body that is 76% white. I think sometimes they don't even know what they're saying is offensive. When I was a freshman, it was really hard for me because there was an instance where a student used racial slurs to me and I felt ignored by the staff and even some of the students when I told them what happened. Minority enrollment at Franklin High School is 24% and only about 1% of those students are black. At the last school board meeting, Julia was one of dozens of students who shared their experience with racism. They collected 450 signatures asking for change. They want district leaders to commit to recruiting and hiring teachers of color. It's kind of hard to spend 12 years at the school and only see white teachers and not see anyone that looks like you. I've been to Franklin for 13 years and I've had one teacher of color in 13 years of school, not a single African-American teacher. They're also asking that lesson plans and required reading include more black history, authors of color and diverse perspectives. The only history we were really taught at our school, the only literature we were taught at our school was that from a very white perspective. Things like Selma or the Central Park Five, current events, things that aren't included in our current curriculum. And they want the Franklin School Board to create and work with a team of racially diverse students and staff to help promote social justice and racism education. Katie, thank you very much. The superintendent of Franklin Schools told us those conversations will help shape the work the school is doing to prevent racism. Teaching kids the love of fishing, that's the goal one man and his nonprofit organization, Fishing for the Heart, has. Adriana Mendez shares their story. All right. Well, we're going to go to um, a couple of spots and we're going to try to get some, um, some bluegill. There's nothing like being out on the open waters. And to Joseph and Caleb. Perfect weather, good fishing. This day. Catching a lot. Couldn't get any better. Lake, and I love your hat. Joseph is one of several mentor fishermen with the nonprofit called Fishing for the Heart. Can't guarantee fish. Uh, you know, they, that's why they call it fishing and not catching. They try to make it the most fun and uh, exciting experience that they could have. The faith based organization teaches kids the ins and outs of fishing. Oh, there it is. There it is. From tips and tricks. Hey, nice job. To information about the fish. Bluegill on him. Yeah. And that's why they call it a bluegill. The nonprofit was started in 2013 by Caleb Needfelt. Caleb is a special needs teacher and takes his students and at risk kids out on the open waters to share the love and joy of the sport. And an at risk kid in our organization is actually any kid. But the real purpose of our mission is to get the kids outdoors. And throughout the years, they have provided more than 500 kids. Like Row here. Good job. With outdoor fun. Pretty awesome, right? It's kind of giving back, you know, the, the passion that we have for the sport. And uh, with Fishing for the Heart, we try to make it as you know, real as possible, not just going to a pond and throwing in a bobber or something, but actually going on a boat ride, uh, going fast. Caleb says besides enjoying the outdoors, the most important part is teaching the yeah. kids how to build good yeah. character. To see them reeling the fish and laughing and enjoying the outdoors and seeing them smile, that's really the motivation behind Fishing for the Heart. And although today was a good day out on the lake, we got them. Yeah. It's not the size of the catch that matters most. I got a <laughs> You did. And, uh, it's the memories oh, made. Little guys. <laughs> but even for them to catch a little bluegill and, and the smile and the laughter and, and the joy that they get out of it is really what we take away from it and what motivates us to continue to grow and to take more and more kids out. We'll put them back in. The kids are really having a good time. Adriana, thank you very much. Now we put more information about Fishing for the Heart on our Positively Milwaukee Facebook page. A scoop of success. An East Troy woman is making sure young adults with special needs get job training experience. Here's digital reporter James Grow. Check out this super long line at one of the hottest, well, I should say coldest, new traveling ice cream trailers in Wisconsin. It's called Sweet Abilities, and they've got a pretty sweet mission. 
we, we focus on their abilities, not their disabilities. I'll double check that that's four. One, two, three, four. Sweet Abilities is a traveling ice cream truck that employs those with special needs to teach them workplace skills like customer service. Hi. And counting change. So how much does she owe? Six, Sixteen dollars. Okay. Sweet Abilities has been in business for less than a month, but it's already gaining popularity. Every Wednesday, they're in East Troy and McWanago. On the other days, they're traveling. Birthdays, graduations, baby showers, wedding showers. What's your favorite part about being out here? Um, doing uh, responsibilities. You reach in there and grab a chocolate chip cookie. Okay, you're gonna put it right in the bucket. The goal is to address the lack of employment for those with different skills, and hopefully by training these young adults, they'll be able to find a full-time job. I want them to know that every person um, has unique abilities, and those unique abilities can be put towards um, being successful in a variety of different situations. Are you having fun out here? Yes. Give everybody a chance. They sell prepackaged ice cream scoops and sandwiches from Purple Door in Milwaukee. To find where the truck will be next, go to their Facebook page, Sweet Abilities. What a great idea. James, thank you very much. Now, we did put the link to Sweet Abilities on our Positively Milwaukee Facebook page, so check that out. I'm going to be right back with my quote of the week. Welcome back. Each week, I'd like to leave you with my quote of the week, inspirational words to live by. Once again, today's comes from a speech that Dr. Martin Luther King gave in 1965 in Selma, Alabama. He was addressing nonviolent demonstrations. He said, quote, a man dies when he refuses to stand up for that which is right. A man dies when he refuses to stand up for justice. A man dies when he refuses to take a stand for that which is true. Thanks for joining us this morning. Have a great week and stay positively Milwaukee.